Hi everyone, um, Stuart here and I'm with Mario this afternoon. It's uh, the latest of the central banks uh, to announce. Uh, Bank of Canada, um, very, very much likely to cut rates. That's what the market's expecting. Last time I looked, it was 85% chance of a 25 basis point cut um, today. Inflation has been coming down in Canada uh, and uh, consequently um, they feel like they can move. Remember, Bank of Canada have surprised the markets in the past. Uh, they, uh, they've made some bold moves. Uh, they were first in QE and QT uh, around that. So um, yeah, see what uh, see what happens today. Uh, last few uh, Bank of Canada announcements Mario and I have uh, have done have uh, been a bit of a non-event, haven't they, <laughs> Mario? The market did the, uh, the dollar carry particularly didn't move particularly. Uh, so we might have a similar event today, um, but. Um, yeah, uh, uh, there was a. I've just seen a recent uh, 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 today's Reuters poll for what the Fed might do. That's up to uh, um, 75 out of 100 odd um, um, market analysts again uh, expecting 25 basis points now from uh, from the Fed in September. So um, unusual that it uh, looks like the Bank of Canada and uh, the ECB are going to beat the Fed to start in the uh, cutting cycle. So. Anyway, we'll see how it all pans out because today's, what do you make of today's uh, ADP number, Mario? It was um, a bit weaker than expected, along with jolts yesterday being a bit weaker than expected. So it all seems to be going in the same direction, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, we see some weakening uh, the labor market conditions. Um, the only thing that uh, doesn't make sense is the PMIs, <laughs> especially yeah. the services, the services PMIs. Um, they are kind of stable as we see but you know the, the ism actually reported a worse than pmi so that mm. makes sense but but in general we see stable pmis mm. Uh, mm. it might be the case that you know all these indications uh show um cooling so it mm. could be the case that inflation in the us eventually will um come down or at least uh, remain stable close to 3%. Uh, and, you know, uh, essentially the the, um, the market participants are watching the interest rate decisions closely. We are expecting volatile market conditions regardless of the situation of what's going to happen because they, uh, they, they, they see the whole picture yeah they are waiting for the fed um i had in, i had in mind that maybe uh the dollar would appreciate because of the expected interest rate differential uh you mm -hmm. know lower interest rates from these major banks while the fed still has high interest rates but you know mm -hmm. it might be the case that uh with the central banks proceeding into a change in interest rate policy it kind of increases the probability of the Fed doing so as well. So this might offset the impact on the dollar. Mm. Uh, it, yeah. it might be the case that you know the Fed will be pushed to reduce interest rates because mm. the others started to do it. Yeah, yeah. We saw it in the yeah. past. This kind of uh, this kind of behavior. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's traditional. That it, not traditional, but it tends to be that the the Fed lead and others follow. But you know they they all they're all obviously focused on their own economies and their own bases. So um, yeah, um, obviously the the other thing that's in the mix a wee bit this year makes it a wee bit different is the amount of elections around. You know, there's the UK coming up in in a month's time. So obviously the the big one at the end of the year in November uh, for the US. Uh, Europe's got elections. We've had these big elections in South Africa and India um, today, and uh, obviously that surprise in Mexico as well over the last couple of days. So yeah, there's always that political slant as well sometimes affecting uh, obviously forex uh, pairs as well and um you know canada's obviously no obviously no different so um i've just got this is the the chart that's on there is just the daily trend we see we're, we're sort of higher lows sorry lower highs i should say and lower lows to an extent as well uh from this top we had uh this i think this is a daily chart isn't it on uh what's my kind of yeah daily chart um back to uh, these tops in uh, April. Yeah, April top. My mouse isn't working for some reason. There we go. There we are. Just need to make sure I've got the calendar up as well. 
how much bring my calendar in my calendar in i, I, I would okay. say i would say that canada is lucky to have low inflation because if, when when we look at the employment change uh, this year 2024 the the figures actually uh most of the most of the time they were beating the forecasts and we're mm. talking about a high amounts as i see here mm. nevertheless the unemployment rate increased so uh, yeah. uh, it was yeah. reported in yeah. february it, it, it was reported 5.7 percent and now it's 6.1 percent mm. so yeah it's been kind of makes sense yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been it's been a bit up and down there. Whereas the you know the general trend has been you know a tight jobs market. It's been quite variable uh, in Canada. It's interesting as well. This month we've got the we've got the CAD Jobs Day on the same as the as NFP on Friday as well. So it's a huge week for uh, Canadian investors, Canadian uh, loony traders as well. Uh, but just um, just into today, basically, we've clearly got um this week a bit of quite a significant support down here at uh, 136 this blue line down here um next big round number is the 137 level which we've been over uh, today and on um, on monday uh, we haven't quite got to it today so far so uh, these higher lows sorry lower highs <laughs> uh, my daily trend line up there uh, at, uh, in play so perhaps we could see this tested if there's a bit of a surprise or um something the market isn't expecting to the upside and to the downside we've got this consolidation here the this the four hour time frame the uh the moving averages here very flat as we've rolled through here uh from the end of this is probably about the late may through to uh, where we are today beginning of june so really directionless uh but sort of aired um and capped at the top side so uh, that's the four hour chart the one hour chart here, dollar CAD, a uh, similar sort of uh, setup with sort of looping lower, a bit more volatility in the uh, uh, last few days, given uh, that, as, as you said, Mario, those PMI, that PMI data, uh, some of the uh, uh, US data as well, uh, moving this. And then obviously the oil news, you had that massive, massive tanking uh, of oil, of the oil market. I just put the oil, I don't actually looked at it much today. Uh, where's it gone? Lost my oil chart. There we are. Uh, is it, is it recovered from that dip under 70 yeah, it's back this is the daily chart so a huge move down on monday five percent plus six percent move we've had to the downside for the uh the oil market this is us oil uh so under 75 that's a big resistance now um big big move um 72 30 was that low and 71 30, um 71 45 on my chart they go back quite a way if i remember rightly let me just, uh, what time is it? Yeah, actually, I'll come off this and put the, we'll go back to the CAD because it's, uh, our announcement is um, is imminent. Yeah, it's just crude zoom oil, to our... Crude oil dropped on the third. It was a minutes. huge drop. Yeah, it, yeah. We, massive, we might massive, see, massive. actually, because we have Canada, we have news related to Canada now, we might see uh, huge moves on crude oil as well with this rate. This Quite year. possibly. Yeah, yeah, we had that, the inventory yeah. build yesterday. There we go. Um, so dollars accruing, Canada, Canadian weaker again. So right into that daily uh, resistance area. Not be worth uh, seeing how that pans out. Obviously, the data's just dropped. Um, that would suggest uh, perhaps a bit of a, a more dovish tone from the statement. So um, indeed, it's got the five, uh, 25 basis point cut as anticipated. So there's no surprise there. Um, mm -hmm. Services, oh, interesting. Services PMIs have come out from the US as well, and they're well, they're, they're actually in line as well. So it's not a particular surprise to uh, cause that. Remember, traders, you know, sometimes the the the, um, the players, the market makers, uh, are waiting for the news to break sometimes to uh, to sort of uh, offload some uh, positions or open some positions using the news as the excuse um, to get in. But that's a fairly positive uh, reaction um as you can see on this five minute chart zoom that one in so uh there's our daily time frame so we're obviously got the high of the day already through this daily trend line so it'll be interesting to see how that how that cools or uh, or how that finishes so if we're going to fade this uh trend line or we're going to push further through it uh let's have a quick look at the statements i don't think there's uh, there might be some surprise in there because that's a fairly hefty move we've gone from 
135 to 137, so 25 pip move. Um, ATR is about um, it's about 50 pips a day, isn't it? The um, uh, yeah, 64 pips a day. So it's a fairly hefty move in that immediate uh, announcement aftermath. So I just quickly check uh, the statements. Do, do, do. Um, again, perhaps considering uh, maybe a, yeah, four and three quarters from five percent. Global economy grew by about three percent. The, 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 in Canada, kind of quite soon, of course, after stalling in the second half, uh, GDPs. Obviously, there's that big surprise in GDP. Yeah, we should perhaps mention that earlier. It's come back. CPI inflation eased further to 2.7% in April, as we said. However, shelter pricing inflation remains high, so the services sector is a bit high. With continued evidence that underlying inflation is easing, government council agree that monetary policy no longer needs to be as restrictive and reduce the policy rate. 25 basis points. Recent data has increased our confidence that inflation will continue to move towards the 2% target. No time frame there, no sort of comments about in the long term or the medium term. Nonetheless, risks to the inflation outlook remain. Governing Council is closely watching the evolution of core inflation and remains particularly focused on the balance between demand and supply in the economy, inflation expectations, wage growth and corporate pricing behaviour. The bank remains resolute in its commitment to restoring pricing stability for Canadians. So no any shocks in there nothing to get too excited about obviously there's a comment about um focusing on inflation still um it's a quick side comment about the surprise of the gdp um interesting note there about there's put something here about china's economy was also stronger in the first quarter um not talking about the global economy that is from their uh, their their own npr results so um yeah, that's nothing. There's nothing too surprising in there. So um, uh, just looking that they remain uh, quite uh, dovish, therefore. So we could see a further weakening of um, of the CAD in the longer term. So um, and that you know key downtrend line here on the daily time frame. You can see here. Let's zoom this up. Oh, we ran right back into it. So. Um, uh, perhaps some shorts around that 137 level, um, but it was a strong day yesterday. We we're in, in a positive day today for the dollar against the, the weak CAD. If I just bring up some of my other CAD crosses as well, I don't. Have you got anything? To, uh, any comment, Mario, on that uh, announcement or uh, the move? Up... Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe viewers uh, would like to know what we think about target levels now. We see a breakout mm -hmm. to the upside. I would mm -hmm. say, for conservatively, I would say that the I agree with you that the Canadian dollar could see more weakening mm -hmm. and uh, that might cause the dollar cut to move to 1.37,300. Um, it's very close to a previous peak. So yeah, it least. could be the case that the, this momentum will continue and we will see a further upside movement of the dollar cut. Yeah, you can see here. These are the. I hope you can see these. These are it's a white candles on white background. Sorry about that. But these are the the CAD crosses. You can see here the CAD's weakened across the board here. Euro CAD at uh, one forty nine through one forty nine twenty. Uh, dollar CAD, as Mario just mentioned, uh, pushing further through one thirty seven, one thirty seven ten. Um, CAD yen down, CAD Swiss down, uh, Aussie CAD uh, over the ninety one level. That's been a key resistance level. Aussie CAD. Um, to the upside and pound CAD here at uh, 175.25. So uh, CAD weaker across the board. Um, the comments about inflation has probably um, sort of um, anchored that. Um, I see if we stall here, but it looks like a follow through. Um, well, if I just put that's the this is the five minute chart here on the uh, dollar CAD. Um, sort of big follow through moment, a uh, big five minute candle, and perhaps. Some follow through, but uh, I've got the 137 on there, but uh, 137's round about there on this chart here. There we are. There's 137, so the big round number. Uh, five pips popped a bit higher. Um, obviously, new daily high. We zoom this in oh, it's to the higher time frames. Not clear resistance area about. I already talked about 130, uh, 37, 35. 30, which is right bang there. There's Mario's uh, 137.30, this top from uh, a few days ago. 
Uh, above that, we went to uh, just above that 137.40, I think, but that was, uh, uh, what's that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days ago. Uh, there's two upside targets. If this continues, if this, this uh, follow through momentum continues, um, obviously the downside was this uh, breach or uh, spike into uh, 136 we had just yesterday. So, uh, sorry, day before yesterday on Monday. Uh, when um, things were a bit too squiffy at the beginning of the beginning of the of the month on Monday, um, so yeah, it's, that's the biggest reaction we've seen uh, in all the time we've been looking at uh, uh, the Bank of Canada, uh, Mario. But you would expect that, given that this is uh, this is the time they've actually taken the action, they've actually cut, uh, they've talked about uh, inflation coming into target, so there may be more to come. Uh, from the Bank of Canada, there was nothing in the statement about um, uh, further moves. Um, so we see how the um, how the second half of the year pans out for them. Um, There's also back a press to that one thirty-seven. So perhaps some um, sellers around the one thirty-seven level on an intraday basis. But, uh, um, there's, a, there's also a press conference uh, half past five uh, server time. Yeah, uh, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. yeah so Mac we might see more volatility on. there. Quite possibly. Uh, you know, the, another pair that is also interesting. Uh, it's the uh, Cat JPY. Yeah. Cat, yeah, no, it, I've, I've got them all on that. Uh, yeah. I, I've noticed recently that the uh, the Japanese yen is is actually strengthening, uh, possibly from bank moves again. I am. I'm, yeah, well. I'm not really sure. Uh, it wasn't but clear, we, so, was we, it? I mean, whenever we see uh, the Japanese yen strengthening, we think about the uh, Bank of Japan, yeah. Um, mm. And and if we look at the hourly chart, uh, we see that yesterday there was a drop of the cut Japanese yen. It was, I mean, a huge drop. Uh, some pairs had 200 uh, pips. This one, 170 Months. are near there. Months so, to move yesterday, yeah. Uh, we see some pressure. We see hmm. like uh, an unusual strengthening of the Japanese yen. If this continues and we have at the same time the Canadian dollar weakening, uh, it would be the case that the cut yen would see lower levels. Quite possibly. Yeah. 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 But it was interesting yesterday when you, uh, it did look, it, it suggested, it was sort of, it wasn't clear what was going on. But uh, when you talk about the yen, uh, but there's, again, it's a bit like last time uh, when the, the, they admitted that they didn't, they had actually um, sort of intervened. You can see here from that top uh, on Monday up here at 115.54, again, just, just this particular pair, CAD yen. We'd still recovered 50% of that decline uh, today from the two-day decline. So again, it's being bought back. So we've got further, further uh, yen weakness um, overall, and that, you saw that on all the yen crosses um, again. And that's happened. That happened last time. We had the, you had these big legs down, uh, which has actually been the Bank of Japan interve intervening. Uh, it's not quite clear over the last two days, but again, it's the beginning of the month, so it, you know it could be. You know, it's a it's a churn time anyway beginning of the month so it could just be coincidental with that as well but there may be some bank of japan intervention for the trying to support the yen but it hasn't worked again is my point it, you know 50 percent of it bought back within uh, a few hours of trading this morning um but yeah um obviously the the announcement from the bank of canada has obviously turned this this pair around this is a uh, this is a standard, this setup here, uh, guys, if you're interested, this is a standard Bollinger Band uh, setup. So it's two uh, standard deviations and a 20 uh, period moving average here in, in the mid, in the, uh, for the midline. And below here, I've got a, um, uh, I've got an MFI. We don't, you probably don't need both of these, but uh, I'll just get rid of the MFI one. Um, some people use MFI instead of RSI because it has a bit of a volume content, but the, as far as his strategy is concerned, the key one is this, is the stochastic here, and it's set at 10.63, the, the stochastic, if, uh, if anybody's interested in using this uh, strategy. And we're looking for crosses of the uh, the K and the D line in the overbought and the over, uh, oversold zone. So standard settings, again, 80 and 20 for your stochastics, but it's um, a bit of a different setting, 10.63. Uh, and uh, we're looking for touches of the uh, outer Bollinger Bands. Um, and you see here we've crossed and that's moved up so that's looking to go short here if we again if obviously uh, and that would have been 
short from around about up the top there as it's crossed up there so uh, if you do if you know brave traders would be trading that head of the bank of japan but that would have in fact it's not actually crossed properly until there so it's you, it wouldn't have actually triggered a sh an entry until uh, that hour there this morning at uh, at one o'clock ahead of uh, the announcement but uh, trading ahead of big uh, I don't know what you think, Mario, but trading ahead of big uh, announcements can be very, very risky, can't it? Uh, regardless of how good your system is. Uh, but yeah, uh, good call. That's uh, yeah, Kajian. We could see this uh, further weakness, but you'd like to see it move below this uh, this one thirteen area here, wouldn't you? I think I would. I would argue on uh, the moves we've had, uh, given that we've been moving yeah. higher on a on a daily basis. We will. If we look at the thirty minute chart. Thirty minute, yeah. On this one, yeah. Cadian. Yeah, Cadian. Yeah. Um, we see that that level there at one hundred and thirteen, and then thirteen point two. Thirteen. One hundred thirteen point twenty. Yes. Yeah, so somewhere here. there is like is like an a mean there, like a, an important yeah. level, like like it's an important level for support. That mm, could be the minutes. target level of the Canadian dollar yen pair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah at the moment, I, but, but yeah. we don't see any kind of, any uh, any cut weakness yet. We see that the dollar cut, for example, is stable; it's not moving. Mm. Uh, so possibly we have yen strengthening again now. Uh, mm, that's sure. why we see the drop. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. if the if the if the Canadian dollar pushes the pair downwards, I think mm. that would be the target level, mm. one hundred thirteen point yeah. two yeah. somewhere there. Yeah. Sorry, I took that away. Yeah. I think you. Uh, no, it's, no it, it, certainly, it certainly has a congestion and, on it. If this continues, yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, yeah. the, we we we'd be looking for the the Bollinger Band to move lower. That's quite a move, but obviously, you would expect that on that. But again, yeah. remember this and is then, thirty minutes on this hour guys this current hour that we're in this is just about to finish we've taken out all the action uh from this morning as we've been accruing as we've been recovering that big shakeout so yeah mario's call yeah it makes sense back down to this uh 113 20 zone um i don't want to put that and, and if if people that are this... looking for a very good opportunity uh taking into consideration the fundamentals which was the opec plus meetings yeah. that what was yeah. decided and all of that i would clearly uh i would have my eyes on the crude oil because mm -hmm. if i'm looking at the daily chart and the four hour chart then let me just, let me just bring it, let me to, i'll just bring yeah, up yeah. mario while you're talking sorry just yeah, no bring problem. Up. yeah. Uh, so that's that's the four yeah. let's go start with the daily yes daily four hour doesn't matter if we put yeah. the bollinger bands we are in the uh lower yeah. band that okay. indicates a strong support and if we take into consideration the rapid drop we should see some retracement now we see a consolidation phase mm. uh, and and pr probably we are going to see later on some breakout of that consolidation could it be the case that it will be on the, in, to the upside? Uh, if we look at the hourly chart, mm -hmm. we, we see that the price is start is, is basically testing the intraday highs. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. if it if it breaks, we could see some nice retracement there, at least to yeah, the yeah. Uh, yeah. 74.6 or mm -hmm. conservatively to 74.5. Yeah, yeah. So I've got so I've got seventy three point eight here on this particular setup from uh, yesterday uh, evening. As we were looping again. If we zoom this in, you see how we've looped down this week uh, as the news is broken and that gossip has broken around the OPEC uh, the OPEC uh, uh, meeting last week. So we went up. Uh, the meeting was over the weekend. Now we've come down and now a big wallop uh, here on uh, on Monday. Another leg down yesterday, and we're sort of as you say consolidating so far today. We've obviously got uh, we got inventories as well. Obviously, impacting uh, impacting um, uh, crude oil today. But here you can see if you can see the signal line here on the MACD, we've sort of flattened. Um, we've sort of flattened out yesterday afternoon, and we started to tick up. Parabolics are still flipping around here on this uh, setup, but as you can see, the Bollinger Band is quite constrained. So we might have 
some expansion um, as we get a bit more volatile uh, volatility in, in coming. But we've had a lot of uh, consolidation, as you said, below this 78, uh, 73.8 area, but we are ticking up. Yeah, and that could attack 74. And then obviously 75 is a hugely psychological uh, number for oil traders uh, historically and um, um, yeah, going forward. So we need to get back over there. We came through it really quickly. Uh, so it might be just a blip under 75, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, hourly moving to the upside uh, here. I just I just noticed that the ISM uh, final the ISM services PMI just uh, was just released, so yeah. it's higher. All right. <laughs> so okay. you see, we have yeah. some some kind of mixed data in regards to business yeah. conditions. We see yeah. uh, manufacturing sector contraction, yeah. services that's, sector that's... expansion. Yeah, that's another good number, though. If you compare it to the rest of the world, 53.8, that's quite a big, significant bounce back. So last month was indeed that outlier. We'd, we'd gone negative. We'd gone into contraction last month, hadn't we? But uh, that's uh, that's quite a positive um, lift. So we've gone from 49 point, uh, sorry, 49.4 to 53.8. That's a significant uplift in, uh, in one month, and its uh, expectations were 51. So... I know these only. I'm sure, guys, these sound like small numbers, but it's a significant, uh, significant beat. So again, this adds to the argument, though, as well, Mario, doesn't it, about the, the the stickiness of the services inflation. So if 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 you know managers, investment managers within the services sector are looking uh, uh, positively, looking to invest, uh, that's obviously adding to their their price pressure as well. So 53.8. That's a really good number. Eurozone this morning was 53.2. The UK was 52.9. Germany's uh, 54.2. Finally uh, starting to tick up as well, uh, better than expected. And uh, 54.2 in Italy, some of the headlines. But yeah, that's a that's top of the shop uh, again from the US. So um, again, that's obviously a let's have a look at. Uh, and 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 if you remember, it's the services inflation that was the issue. Basically. Exactly, and it is. The, it no, remains it's... the issue. Yeah, 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 yeah. It remains the issue. So if we just uh, drift away a bit from the, as my, uh, as our fifteen minute, uh, the, the cat, dollar cut go. eventually is moving <laughs> towards the level. Yeah, uh, so, I guess. Yeah. I guess it got a push from the ISM figure. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I would guess the dollar's up. That's why I've come back to this uh, set. If I just bring the dollar, um, I bring up the, the uh, dollar index up here on the down to the fifteen minutes. So I'll see how we. <laughs> It's all gapped up here on our, on our CFD chart here. So big lift for the dollar. Uh, Euro, I guess, a uh, big rejection of uh, 109 yesterday, and we're down. Uh, it's been fairly uh, fairly strong today, the Euro, here at this pivot level, this 108.85 area, but we've come down from that now as that data has come in. Um, sterling, uh, sterling done against similar reverse back under the today's pivot area at 27, oh, uh, 127.76. Uh, uh, see if it's going to go lower than uh, produce a new low, day low here because again sterling's been fairly robust um everyone's favorite let's have a look at uh, how the uh, oil market's gone sorry i can't see my, my chart here uh so this is the uh the hourly chart for gold in the longer term again it's sort of really consolidating but certainly under the uh that two three fifty area but uh that's given um oil pressure down as the dollars bid so again we've ran into the 200 hour moving average again today like we did yesterday and the day before and the day before that and a day and a couple of days before that and it's rejecting it again uh but back into this sort of very sort of sideways action here for the gold market i don't know where we're gonna uh move this but we look we've been very much sideways for 10 days here so need some need some impetus to gold market at the moment but uh Sideways action, non-trending, uh, but services ISM out of the US, fifty-three point eight, very good. That's another positive tick. So that will probably add to the this idea of um, the September rate hike. Uh, I say it was sixty-five percent this morning. That's probably ticked up. I don't know if uh, I don't know if my um, I'll show you my uh, quick cme this is a free site guys so it's it tends not to move uh that quickly um so the uh september one now yeah it's it's uh, uh 50 58 percent 
Um, this is what they had. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, that hasn't updated, I don't think. Yeah, so. Okay, so. Yeah, 58, 68%. Of, yeah, yeah, but this is, this is it. So this is even low, though. We've still got 11% that we're going to go down to uh, four and three quarters. So if we add those two together, that's 68, um, 69% now. So 70% um, chance of a, a rate cut in the September, at the September meeting. Uh, obviously, nothing happening um, next month uh, here, June, nothing happening, and in July as well. Uh, no, no change, eighty percent. That's come before. That's interesting. That's uh, that's changed a wee bit. Uh, it's got nearly up to twenty percent now. Actually, action in July still seems a bit too too premature to me. But uh, that's what the futures are saying at the moment. So, um, yeah. So, um, so September certainly looks like we'll have a rate cut by September by the Fed. But Bank of Canada, Canada's already gone, as we've just seen, and uh, ECB uh, likely to go again tomorrow. Uh, so little reaction on the gold market. Obviously, big moves, uh, uh, weakening moves uh, for the Canadian dollar on the confirmation that they've actually cut rates uh, today and uh, quite a benign outlook for uh, for inflation as well. So the 137, um, any shorts placed there hasn't uh, hasn't played out immediately. Uh, we're still moving uh, 137.35. Is that next line on? I don't know where I've got that from. Oh, that was that high. Uh, from a few days ago here. There we go. <laughs> Anything to add, Mario? Um, no, I'm just looking at the dollar cut. Uh, we yeah. said that the target level would be 1.37300. I think it's near that now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. looking at uh, crude oil as well because today might be the day that it will move. I guess mm -hmm. people might also wait for the press conference as well to, you know, take any action, any more action. Possibly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And, yeah. And, and another thing is uh, basically the dollar. I'm looking at the dollar index. It's going up with the, this push from the... Uh, services PMI, it could be the case that the dollar eventually will start appreciating. Um, and if the ECMB tomorrow is going to proceed with the cut, I guess it will. Uh, imagine that the uh, probability of uh, of the of um, inbound Canada to uh, proceed with a, an interest rate cut was, uh, was less than what ECMB's probability was. So mm -hmm. I think ACMB will proceed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it looks like it's got. Sorry, there's an alarm going off. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they were more. I mean, the ECB have more uh, 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 painted into a corner than uh, than the Bank of Canada were. So they've talked themselves very much into that. So yeah, they, they that more or less um, nailed on. But yeah, dollar uh, accruing, um, as you say, one uh, or four T uh, four uh, dollar index. Um. Uh. Yeah. One of four fifty. I've got next. Uh, yeah, there's kind of a resistance there. there. It mm -hmm. was a previous mm -hmm. support. Now it's a resistance. Mm -hmm. If it breaks, we could see the dollar mm -hmm. starting to appreciate more. You know, mm -hmm. with ACMB also mm -hmm. cutting interest rates, it could be that the dollar is more um, uh, desirable. Let's say for yeah. Uh, yeah. capital to pour into that uh, currency. Yeah, Let's possibly, see. but if the if if the certainty or not the certainty, but um, the likelihood they are gonna they're gonna go later in the year, you know, it'd be a short some short term uh, money flows. Uh, but the, again, there wasn't anything. Uh, perhaps Macklin and the, the Bank of Canada will be asked at the at the press conference a bit more or pressed a bit more. But there's nothing in the statement about uh, any potential future moves or outlook. They're still saying looking for two percent for inflation. Um, you know, kind of, uh, it's we, we've got, had it quite well controlled. We're comfortable about doing this. Um, so similar sort of comments probably from the ECB tomorrow. Just that uh, Lagarde tends to be a bit more of a political beast, be, given that she was a politician uh, than any of the other central bankers. So she can uh, perhaps spin her words a wee bit better than some of the others. But uh, Macron's not known for his um, uh, a sort of uh, a, a, a bruteness or a, a, tube, a tube, tubeness um so um 
yeah, I see what you may have to say later. But at the moment, it's a. Uh, let me just leave you with the uh, CAD crosses. It's a weaker um, Canadian dollar uh, across the board there. Let's um, just put that one down with two dollar white ones. So you see here, it's a, it's a weaker Canadian dollar across the board. We've uh, but uh, we've got some bounce back here in the, against the Swissy and the yen, uh, less so. Um, um, Dollar CAD because of the uh, the positive number for the uh, uh, the US uh, euros reversed it all as well so euro uh, was up CAD's come back and similar not as much here against the pound and less so again against the Aussie as well so a bit of a mixed mixed bag there uh, certainly the bigger biggest beneficiary of today's um, uh, news has been uh, uh, people that were long uh, dollar CAD because um, it's um, the Canadians have helped that move up. And uh, the US data has also helped that uh, move up. So we're currently trading 137.30 has been breached. Mario, your target area. So well done. Uh, we've uh, sort of gobbled up 30 pips as we've been talking quite comfortably. The, the 137 area um, didn't short prove uh, a, a resistance area or shorting area currently. So 30 pips in the bag. Well done uh, as we move to the upside. Any questions, anybody? You've all been very quiet out there. If not, we'll uh, we'll call it a day. We've uh, been here maybe half an hour. Uh, yeah. The okay. The one more comment. The dollar obviously helped with the with the pair. Um, I don't know if the if if there is a, a an effect on the Canadian dollar as well later on, but if it sees more depreciation, we have another breakout. Yeah, the highest mm. the peak on the uh, 30th of may i was i think i see here 1.37 345 yeah, that's 40, a peak yeah. and yeah, it's there. trying to break that now it's trying to mm. break that so if it yeah. sees more more weakening uh, the canadian dollar sees more weakening we could see more breakouts and that could mm. push it to the upside more yeah, it's quite a thick. It's quite as you say though. It's a quite a thick uh, resistance up there, like a one thirty seven forty five zone. So, uh, we've been top for uh, top for May, but you know, April we went to over one thirty eight and one thirty eight fifty was tested very briefly in today. I seem to remember um, at um, one point, but uh, yeah, it's uh, certainly a good day for uh, CAD. Uh, sorry, dollar CAD bulls. Uh, so less so uh, against the other CAD crosses, but they're, they're obviously traded uh with uh, less uh, volume so it's come back a bit more quickly uh interesting cad yen's forming uh, has, has bounced a wee bit as well here but uh big reaction against the euro uh as well um, um it's a weaker euro as well so anyway um terence anybody um another asset you'd like to see i was like to have a look at uh, it's obviously all uh, cad and dollar Base, given the news today so we'll just leave you with uh the summary of the news so uh the bank of canada as expected has cut interest rates by 25 basis points to 475 basis points for the overnight rate uh we've got an upcoming um press conference from mr macklin and the rest of the governors of the bank of canada and uh ism the institute of service management uh, um project uh uh, purchasing managers index uh, the services sector for the US has come in uh, much stronger than I expected it's come in at uh, 54.8 uh, um, um, and um, the sorry 54.8 was the uh, the the is the the s p the uh, the ism came at 53.8 uh, but again much stronger than I expected it from 51 and 49.4 so that one month blip uh down last month uh, indeed was just a bit of an outlier into the contraction zone so it's um, adding to this story about uh, inflation and dri being driven by that services uh sector and so um you know again um see um high for longer september perhaps more on the cards for a rate cut from the fed than it was at the beginning of the week so anyway if there's no questions, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up and uh, we'll say goodbye. Join us tomorrow. Mary and I will be here again tomorrow for the ECB announcements. See if there's uh, as much activity as there was on the CAD dollar.
Uh, there's no more follow through news, I don't think, tomorrow afternoon after the ECB, but there's a longer trading day still to come after the ECB tomorrow as well. And uh, as I say, Mr. Gard is always interesting. So, Mario, thank you for your time. Uh, we'll see you all again tomorrow. Thank and, you. Uh, I'll well, see you. Tomorrow. See you. All right. All the best, everyone. Bye bye. bye.